Okay, well this is the last opportunity for to try one of these, uh, these questions out, and I think you'll enjoy this one. The last one is the, uh, is the old favorite, let f of x equal the square root of x. Square root of x. Find the instantaneous rate of change of that function when x equals 4. And to try to give you a little a physical sense of this, if you want to think about a physical sense of, of this, let's pretend that this actually describes the, the rate, I'm sorry, describes the position, rather, um, of the uh, little bear bicyclist that we looked at earlier. So the bear bicyclist, we want to take a look at um, the, the position of this thing, and suppose it's given by that. I actually want to show you, the reason why I picked the bear bicyclist is because I can actually capture the, the live movement in terms of the velocity. And I want you to see this and watch it, and then we're going to study it a little bit more. But just for fun, you can watch this, and here's how it's going to look. And maybe you noticed that it started off sort of fast, and then it sort of tapered down and slowed down. And, and let's see uh, if that really is what's being described here. Okay, well anyway, to find the instantaneous rate of change, I just remind you that, well, how do you find instantaneous rate of change? It's just an application of the derivative. So this is a, sort of a no frills, no bells, no whistles kind of uh, question. All we have to do here is find the derivative and then evaluate it at 4, and that will give us the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, well let's try that. Let's try that one right now on the fly. So you have to remember, of course, the definition of the derivative. Well, there it is. And here's our function. So let's see how we proceed in finding the derivative of this square root function. So again, I start off, as always, just writing in f prime of x equals the limit as delta x approaches 0 of, well, f of x plus delta x. Now, f of x equals the, the square root of x. So what is f of x plus delta x? Well, wherever I see this x here, I'm going to replace it by all that stuff right there. So I'm going to replace it by x plus delta x. And so I see the square root of x plus delta x. That's just this piece right here. See how that follows looking at this? I just took out the x and put in x plus delta x. Now I have to subtract off f of x. Well, that's just subtracting off the square root of x. Divide all that by delta x. There's the limit. Let's take it. If delta x goes to 0, then that term right there goes to 0. And so I see the square root of x minus the square root of x. Well, that's 0. OK, but then I have 0 on the bottom, too. Indeterminate form needs more work. What would you do here? Well, this is not really a problem where factoring is going to sort of um, be a good idea. However, you might recall from those cool tricks we learned about finding limits that when you see square roots like this, a good idea sometimes is to multiply by a clever choice of 1. A clever choice of 1. By multiplying something by 1, you're certainly not going to change the value of it. So I'm going to write this. This equals the limit as delta x goes to 0. I'm going to write all that stuff out there. Square root of x plus delta x minus the square root of x all over delta x. But now I'm going to multiply that by 1. And what's the choice of 1 that I'm going to use here? Well, it's going to be something divided by itself. And I'm just going to write in all that square root stuff. The thing that scares me is the square roots. So maybe I should just multiply everything through by the square roots and hope all those radicals will just go away. Now, a good choice would be to put in a minus sign there. But if you try that, you'll see square roots will still remain when you FOIL and untangle this. However, if you change the sign of whatever that is, that was the trick we saw when we were looking at limits earlier. If you multiply by the exact same object as that square root, but just change the sign, then the inside term and the outside term will drop out, and there'll be no square roots on the top. That was the trick. Now, armed with that trick, I think we're home free. Let's take a look and see. The limit as delta x goes to 0. Notice I keep writing that out, by the way. Boy, your prof would be so impressed with you if you keep writing out every time. OK, well, now let's uh, multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. If I multiply the tops, that's going to be a little bit of foiling here. Let me do that for you right now. It's the first times the first. Well, those two things are the same. And since it's a square root, what do we see? Well, when you square a square root, the radical just lifts. So all I see here is x plus delta x. That's just that product right there. 
Then I'm going to have an inside term, which notice is minus the square root of x times the square root of x plus delta x. However, then I immediately add the square root of x times the square root of x plus delta x. So these two terms actually add up to give 0. They cancel out. I could write that down, but I won't. They just cancel. And I'm left with the last term. And a minus square root of x times a plus square root of x gives me a minus x. Because again, the radical lifts, but there's a negative sign there. So the, the top actually cleans off quite nicely. In fact, you might already see those two terms actually cancel. But I won't, I won't cancel them right now. And that's all divided by the bottom. And remember my philosophy about bottoms, I don't distribute. In fact, I try to avoid touching the bottom as much as possible because the more you touch it, the more complicated I think you can make it. So I just keep everything there. But I do remember that it's all that times delta x. I didn't make that usual mistake that I tend to make of forgetting to multiply everything through. I keep it nestled in the parentheses right there. OK, well, now I notice the happy, the happy fact that this x and this minus x actually annihilate themselves. And all I'm left with on the top now is a delta x. And then I have a delta x factor on the bottom. Well, there's the 0 over 0. It's sort of almost like a hunting game. Can you hunt down the 0 over 0 that makes this thing an indeterminate form? I think this is great fun. Don't you think this is fun? You have to admit, it's sort of fun. The idea is to hunt down. It's like a mystery. Can you find it? Like Sherlock Holmes kind of thing. OK, well, there it is. We can cancel them out. So I'm going to cancel them out. Now, by the way, when you cancel this out, you are left with an invisible 1 on top. Don't forget that. I don't want you to think there's a 0 there. There's an invisible 1 because it's 1 times delta x. OK, and now what do we have? Well, now what we see is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of, and on the top, I just have a nice clean 1. Look how nice that is. And on the bottom, I just have the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. So notice how I migrated the square roots of x that were originally on top, but were being subtracted, which is bad, to square roots on the bottom, but they're being added. That's happy. I can now actually take the limit, let delta x get really, really small, let it approach 0, let it head to 0. As it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, what happens? Well, this term right in here shoots down to 0. And so what are we left with? So this equals, now I'm actually taking the limit, so I'm not going to write the limit anymore because I'm actually taking the limit. This equals 1 divided by, well, the square root of x plus 0 plus the square root of x. So what is the square root of x plus the square root of x? Is that just x? Does the radical lift because I have two of them? No. I'm adding, not multiplying. So if I have one square root of x and another square root of x, how many square roots of x do I have? I've got two of them. So in fact, this equals 1 over 2 square root of x. And that's the derivative. So now we see the derivative of the function square root of x is 1 divided by 2 square root of x. The question, I remind you, you know, we can just read it over there if you don't want to be reminded of it, is to find the instantaneous rate of change when x equals 4. Or if you think about it in terms of the little bear, the little bear traveling, uh, how fast is the bear traveling at the fourth second? And so now let's pick that up. That's just now evaluating the derivative, which gives us the velocity or instantaneous rate of change, f prime at 4. So if I plug in 4 into this formula, I see 1 over 2 square root of 4. And the square root of 4 I know is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, so this is 1 fourth. Oh, and I guess I never specified, oh, I did specify the feet. I think it's feet, let's say feet per second. So it's going 1 fourth feet per second. That's how fast it was going at the, at the fourth second.